In this lesson, we'll take a look at multiplying polynomials. And in the examples in this page, I'm going to model multiplying polynomials by using algebra tiles. And that's what these green uh, rectangles and squares represent. Now, first of all, we're going to model multiplying 2x by 3x. So on this, uh, in this diagram, this dimension is going to be 2x. Now, each of these rectangles is meant to be x long, whatever x is. Remember, x normally represents a placeholder. It could be, it's a variable. It could be some value. And in formulas, you could substitute a number in place of x. So x isn't a specific number here. So this distance along here to this point is x. This distance is 1. If you have a rectangle, the length times the width gives the area. So x times 1 would be 1x. One so this is, that's why this is called an x. Along the top, this will be 3x. We'll put three of those x's there. And then we fill the all area in from here right up to here. And so that would make uh, six of these squares. Now each of these squares is x by x. Now when you multiply x by x, you get x squared. That's what x squared means. It means an x multiplied by another x. And all of these are the same size, so we would call all of these x squareds. Notice that there are six of them. And so that means that 2x times 3x should be 6x squared. Algebraically, without the algebra tiles, we multiply 2 by 3 to get 6, and x times x is x squared. You actually add the exponents. Remember, there's a 1 here and a 1 here. 1 and 1 add to 2. That's how I know that there are two x squareds multiplied there. To uh, model multiplying x plus 2 by 2x plus 3, this dimension is going to be the x plus 2. So this is x plus two more. Each of these little tiny squares is meant to be a one by one square. One times one, of course, is one. So that has an area of one. So that's the x plus, and then this is the two right here. So that dimension is x plus two. Across the top, we'll do two x plus three. So that's the two x plus one, two, three. Now, when you fill in the rest of the diagram, there are two of these x by x squares, or x squareds. These rectangles over here are each one wide by x long. One times x is x, so that's a, there's three x's there. Same thing down here, but there's four of them. They're x by one long, and there are four of them. And then there are six of these little tiny squares down here. Uh, of course, each of them has an area of one, so altogether that's six. So we could add all those up to get what x plus 2 times 2x plus 3 represents. I'm going to show algebraically how you do that and how it relates to these uh, all these squares and rectangles over here. So algebraically, what you do to multiply two binomials is you multiply every term in one of them by every term in the other. So we go x times 2x would be 2x squared. So that's the 2x squared right there. And then we multiply x by 3. Now you can multiply them in different orders. So you don't have to go this times this and then this times this. Okay, that's just the order that I normally do it. So x times 3 would be a 3x. So that's those 3x's right there. And then this 2 times this 2x, 2 times 2x is 4x. That's those 4x's right there. And 2 times 3 gives you 6 and that's the 6 right here. Now all of these x's are the same size so we can combine them together 3x and 4x will add to 7x. Those are the like terms here. So altogether this multiplies and simplifies to 2x squared plus 7x plus 6. This is the expanding or multiplying step. From there we go to here by simplifying by collecting any like terms. The only like terms are the two uh, 3x and 4x terms. Flipping over to the example on the uh, second page, uh, we just have four examples we're going to take a look at here. So uh, no algebra tiles in this page, just uh, expanding, just do the algebra. So x times x will give you x squared. And then we multiply x by 5. 
to give you 5x and then 4 times x will give you 4x and then 4 times 5 in the end gives you 20. The uh, like terms of the 5x and 4x so they can be added together so we have x squared plus 9x plus 20 that's what that would expand and simplify to. Uh, b over here same idea 4 times 2x is 8x squared 4 times 2 is the 8 x times x is x squared 4x times 3 would be 12x 4 times 3 is 12 and there's only 1x in that product so it's just 12x negative 1 times 2x negative 1 times 2 is negative 2 so that'll be minus 2x and negative 1 times 3 on the end gives you minus 3 again the like terms are the 2x terms in the middle here so 12x minus 2x is 10x so this simplifies to 8x squared plus 10x minus 3 now when you start getting into ones a little bit larger there's three things to multiply here the negative 3 is uh, just a number or constant but there really, really are still three things to multiply here. Now you can multiply the negative 3 into one of the binomials. You would not multiply them both by negative 3, just one of them. Or you could multiply the two binomials together first. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to leave the negative 3 out front and multiply these two binomials together first, just like in the examples in A and B. So I'll leave the negative 3 there. So 2x times 5x would be 10x squared. And then 2x times this 2 would give you 4x. Now so I've multiplied the 2x by each of these. Now I'm going to multiply the negative 1 by each term in the second binomial. So negative 1 times 5 would be minus 5x and negative 1 times 2 would be minus 2 and we'll close the bracket. Now before I multiply the negative 3 in I'm going to just combine my like terms. These two middle terms are like terms, they're both x terms and so 4x minus 5x is minus 1x. Now I can multiply the negative 3 in, so every term here, this is called a dis distributive property, every term just gets multiplied by negative 3. So negative 3 times 10x would be minus 30x squared. Negative 3 times negative 1x, negative 3 times negative 1 is 3, so this would be 3x, and negative 3 times negative 2 is 6, so plus 6 in the end. Now just a little bit larger one in the end here. Um, the first part is very similar to what we did in C, so I'm going to expand that the same way. I'm going to leave the 2 out front and then multiply these two binomials together, and I'll do the same thing here. So my 2 stays out front, so 4x times x is x squared. 4x times 5 would be 20x. Negative 3 times x would be minus 3x, and negative 3 times 5 would be minus 15. Close the bracket minus. Now, I'm going to put a bracket here and inside it I'm going to multiply the two of these together. That is going to change all the signs because we're actually it means we're subtracting all of this or adding it and multiplying it by negative 1. There's really a negative 1 there. That's why the signs change. So 3x times 2x would be 6x squared. 3x times negative 1 would be minus 3x. 2 times 2x would be a 4x and 2 times negative 1 is minus 2 and we close the bracket. Now so let's collect like terms before we multiply this 2 in or, or take the brackets off here. So a 20x minus 3x is 17x 4x squared stays the same, minus 15 stays the same 6x squared here, negative 3x plus 4x is 1x and minus 2 in the end. So I'm going to expand this 2 in. The 2 distributes into this trinomial. 2 times 4x squared would be 8x squared. 2 times 17x would be 34x. 2 times negative 15 is minus 30. And then when we remove the brackets, it's really, again, like there's a negative 1 here. So all of these are getting multiplied by negative 1. Negative 1 times 6x squared is minus 6x squared. Negative 1 times x would be minus x. And negative 1 times negative 2 would be plus 2 and then we collect the like terms. Notice there's two x squared terms here, so 8x squared minus 6x squared would be 2x squared. 34x minus 1x would be 33x, and negative 30 plus 2 is minus 28. And so that's as simplified as we can write that. And that's the end of the lesson.